Hi everyone and welcome to the Talent LMS demo. I'm Pamela and today I'll be giving you an overview of Talent LMS. Whether you are looking to train your employees, partners, customers, students or even sell your courses with Talent LMS, there are some basic principles that are useful to all. In Talent LMS, we have three default user types the administrator, the instructor, and the learner. It is important to understand these three different roles. So, the administrators are responsible for every aspect in the system. They have access to all the system's courses, they can add and edit users, create categories and branches, and configure the system settings in general. The instructors manage the courses they only have permission to, which means they can add content and users to them. They can also grade assignments and instruct led training sessions related to those courses specifically. And lastly, learners can just enjoy the courses. In this demo, we will be going over each user role in more detail. So let's start off with the learner's view. Here is an example of a custom homepage for an online training academy. The images, the links, and the featured courses over here can be fully customized. Learners can either self-register through here or can log in using their credentials. Let's log in. Here's the learner's default dashboard. These are the courses a learner is enrolled to, organized under categories and subcategories. The tags on the right help learners to easily see the status of each course, whether it has been completed, is in progress, restricted, expired, or is due to expire soon. The course catalog is where learners can discover and acquire new courses that have been made available by their instructor or administrator. If a price is associated to a course like this one, then the learner will be prompted to purchase it through PayPal or Stripe. Now, going back to the dashboard, learners can also join groups. Joining a group means the learner gets assigned to the group's courses. To join a group, you need to use a key that is usually provided by the instructor or admin. Let's look at an example. Entering this key will automatically assign the learner to the sales group of courses, as you can see here. Let's now have a look at an actual course, Fire Safety Awareness, for example. Here is the course's summary page where you can see its description, content, and completion rules. Beginning the course, we come across a content unit type containing text, images, and embedded links. You can create content like this one using our built-in content editor. Next is a video pulled from YouTube. A certain time limit has been set for this unit, which is shown here. The learner will be able to complete this unit after that time is up. Here we see a web content unit. For example, this one has been pulled directly from Wikipedia. Next, we see an uploaded PowerPoint presentation. The learner here will need to complete a question at the end of the unit in order to move on to the next one. Click on Submit Answer, and if it's correct, we'll be able to continue. Here is an iframe unit type. This is an entire website embedded into the unit, as you can see here. Moving on, we come across a test. Starting the test, the first question is a fill-in-the-gap type of question. Next is an ordering question. So let's put these in the correct order and click on Submit. Then is a drag and drop question. And now is a free text question. For these types of questions, the instructor lists the words that should or should not be contained in the answer. And finally, a multiple choice type of question. After you're done, you can see the score you got and what you got right or wrong. Next, we see an assignment type of unit. Learners can either fill in the answer here or can upload one using these supported file types. For example, they can even upload their answer in a video format. Let's quickly fill in an answer here. Keep in mind that instructors need to grade these types of assessments. Finally, a survey is up with a multiple choice. And a free text question. When you're done, you'll get a pop-up that the course has been completed. 
If it has a certificate, you'll be able to share it on LinkedIn if the admin allows it or can just download it. And here it is. Going back to the learner's dashboard. If the gamification function is enabled by the admin, a learner can acquire points, levels, and badges. This gives a sense of healthy competition amongst learners and can drive engagement. They can see their position on the leaderboard here. Learners can also easily track their own progress through here. Their progress is displayed based on the courses, tests, surveys, and assignments they've completed, or the certificates and badges they've acquired. They can also view and download their progress in an infographic format like this one, which is a more fun way of displaying their performance. Lastly, the learner can communicate with others on the platform in various ways. The default communication tools are discussions, which are found here. They can hold discussions in groups or as part of a course which allows for a more social kind of learning. Learners can also choose to send a private message to each other, to their admin or instructor. Moving on to the instructor user type, this is their default dashboard. This is a list of courses that they can edit. An instructor can also add new courses through here, if the admin allows it. Let's look at the fire safety awareness course from an instructor's perspective. You can choose to add a new unit through here. Talent LMS supports all these content types. You can also clone a unit used in another course or even link a unit from another course so that changes made in one are reflected in the other two. An instructor can also choose to message the learners of a specific course letting them know of any new course updates here. A course can be shared publicly by enabling this option. This means that anyone with this link will be able to view it without having to register onto the platform. If you're using our native mobile applications to deliver your courses, make sure you check the mobile app compatibility and offline availability. Finally, you can edit a course's rules here. These are the sequence units are displayed in. Then the completion rules. For example, if certain units must be completed or if a test must be passed. And lastly, setting prerequisite courses. Going back to the instructor's homepage, an instructor has the option to create a group or a conference. They can also contribute or create new discussions, grade learner assignments and ILT sessions, and add events to the calendar. And the best saved for last. Let's move on to the view of an administrator. Administrators are responsible for the overall structure and management of the system. By default, a super admin has all three roles enabled and can switch from one to another through here. Let's look into each admin responsibility. In terms of adding users, learners can be added manually one by one through here or can be imported in masses using an Excel file through the import option. Learners can also be given the option to self-register or can log in directly if a single sign-on configuration has been set up through the user settings here. In terms of groups, these allow you to group users and assign them to multiple courses at once, either by using mass actions or by setting up a group key through the groups option. Regarding white labeling, customizing your portal and adding your own brand identity is an important admin responsibility. These settings can all be found under account and settings. You can add your own logo and favicon here. Going into themes, you can change the colors of any element in the portal just like this. And advanced users can even add their own CSS or JavaScript codes. You can also choose to map your own custom domain through this option to fully white label your portal. Going back to the homepage, you can also set up branches. These allow you to create separate training instances under your main portal. This could be used to train different clients, users in different languages, separate departments, and more. Let's look at the sales branch, for example. A branch can have its own sub URL a separate theme, a custom homepage, 
logo, language or time zone, user settings, and separate e-commerce settings. Each branch has its own user and course set and can be managed by a separate branch admin. Using the branch's subdomain, you can see there's a completely different homepage with different featured courses. Let's log in as a branch admin. Logging in, you can see that a branch admin has a different dashboard and only has access to the courses, users, and groups assigned to this branch and to the respective reports. Their permissions and access can be tweaked further by the main admin through the user type option. Let's go back to the main portal. Through the events engine, an admin can set up the system notifications and automations. Let's look at the notifications first. These are emails that go out automatically on certain triggers such as user sign up, course completion, and so on. You can customize the message and the triggers, but we've got some set up just to get you started. Now let's look at automations. Automations are an extremely important feature that can save you a great amount of time, especially if you are managing a significantly large number of users. You can set up actions that are performed automatically in the system when certain events occur, like these ones here. For example, you can assign specific courses at a specific time frame after sign up, or automatically assign one course after another has been completed. Assign specific courses based on the grade of others. You can deactivate users at a specific time frame after their last login and much, much more. The options here are endless. All you have to do is identify what your goals are and design the system automations accordingly. Last but not least, let's have a look at reports. We pride ourselves for having strong reporting capabilities that reveal a great amount of detail of user progress. All types of reports in the system can easily be exported in Excel or CSV format with a click of a button. Or even better, they can be scheduled to be sent as an email to a custom recipient list at a given time frame. Digging in further, you can view detailed reports on every user, specific courses, branches, groups, SCORM units, tests, surveys, and assignments. The best part is custom reports. These truly give you the flexibility to segment users in the system that comply with certain rules like these ones. Let's look at a specific example. Give the report a title and then set the rules. So let's segment users who have not completed either of these two courses have signed up during the last 60 days and have the custom user field that I have created belong to my marketing department. Customize the columns and run the report. These will generate a list of users that fall under the rules we set. Now, based on these users, you can perform any of the following mass actions. For example, you may choose to send them all a message to remind them about their incomplete courses. Note, custom reports and automations are only available on our basic unlimited plans and above. Now this was only a quick overview of the platform. If you have any further questions regarding the capability or our pricing, please feel free to contact us. Thank you so much for watching this demo. I hope it brought you one step closer towards awesome learning with Talent LMS.